Well, hi guys, Mike here, and we're finally down in the shop, and I've got some time to do some video work. And we've had uh, quite a busy time here on the farm, what with cleanup from this derecho. Plus, uh, there's been so much uh, cleanup work throughout this area that uh, everybody's been using their trailers, and they've been breaking their trailers, so I've been doing some welding on trailers. It seems like uh, one after another was coming in. But now we're caught up a little bit, so I've got some time to uh, do something for myself. And I haven't used a lathe for a while, and so I think I'm going to do a lathe project. And uh, so come on in a little bit closer, and I'll show you what I'm looking at here. So this is my little uh, Harbor Freight uh, die grinder, and I have had this for a long time. And it's really done a really good job. It's about a $15 die grinder, and uh, it's uh, something that I use a, a fair bit of time. But uh, the other day I was using it, and uh, and this this is a, a plastic cap that kind of goes on here, and I don't I don't think it actually retains the bearings, but I think it's more or less acts as a, as a guard, so you don't get anything. Uh, in this area of the grinder and it's plastic and there's no way you can buy something like this I mean this is I mean let's face it this is a throwaway item and uh, but I thought well you know rather than throw it away I think I'll, I'll make a little cap for it but I'll make it out of steel something a little bit more durable and you know I'll be the first to admit there's no way to justify this project economically I mean you know if if I actually uh, put a value on my time uh, you know I would be much you know further ahead to throw this thing away and just get a new one but because um, you know because I do have a hankering to do a little bit of lathe work and uh, yeah and, uh, and I've had this grinder for a long time it's still in good shape with the exception of this plastic part that broke um, I think I'll just go ahead and make one. Um, there's, there's nothing really super difficult about this part. Uh, I mean, it's, it, it does have some internal threads. That's probably the trickiest thing. And uh, the other thing that makes it a little bit tricky is the fact that it's such a thin shell. So it's very fragile to hold on to. But um, we will process that in such a manner that uh, being thin isn't really an impedance to getting a good job. So that's our project and I think we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, now one of the things um, with this threading, uh, these threads run right up tight to the, uh, the end of the, uh, to, to the blind end of this uh, ring. So uh, what I'll do on mine, this, this is a molded part by the way, they, they can do things you can't do in machining, but uh, what I'll do with mine is I'll put a relief in there and that'll cut down uh, maybe uh, the uh, number of threads by a couple and that's okay, that's, there's still plenty to hold uh, this thing on. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, put a relief in here and then uh, go up against the solid end stop on my carriage and then feed out because um, obviously I want to get as close as I can to this this blind end here. What I want to do is run my lathe in reverse and run the carriage up against the end stop and then feed out but I don't have a, a an insert bar that will go in there. So here's, here's the way I'm going to make my, my cutting, my thread cutting insert, is I've, I've got this uh, rough steel here, and I'll square it up and put a slot in it, and then I'll, I'll put my cutter in here, and uh, I'll grind the geometry right here on the cutter, and then um, this is the way it'll look on the lathe if this, if this was the part I'm making. 
So this is very shallow. It's only like three-eighths of an inch deep that I have to go. Actually, more like a quarter by the time I count for my relief. So this won't have to stick out much. But uh, So anyway, uh, let's get started. We'll square this up, put the slot in it, and we'll make our uh, tool holder for it. The tool holder will go in the tool holder. And uh, yeah, so that's the way we'll do that. By the way, this is a custom thread, uh, custom in as much as it's not standard. It's probably just what uh, worked out for the manufacturer of this die bender. And uh, I threw a pitch gauge on there, and uh, remember, this is only about a quarter of an inch of threads here. So uh, I checked it, and it's either a 18 threads per inch or a 1.25 millimeter thread, and the pitch gauges on both of those fit so closely in that short distance that um, I think either one will work. Now, if you had a, a, a longer engagement, you would probably have to determine whether it's the, the imperial or the metric, but uh, in my case it doesn't matter, and uh, it's easier for me to use uh, imperial on my lathe. My lathe will do metric also, but um, I like doing the Imperial because then I can use the half nut to engage uh, it, it would be a little bit dicey With the millimeter having to uh, reverse my carriage every time and end up exactly in my relief slot so uh, So that's what we'll do. We'll make it an 18 TPI thread And the diameter like I said is this is so unstandard. It's unbelievable the um, it's about uh, um, about an inch and three eighths, so it would be like inch and three eighths, eighteen thread. So, now I've roughed in my little threading insert holder on the mill, and uh, when I chose the steel for this. I just found a piece of mystery material from my scrap pile and it was like a, uh, I don't know, hitch from a John Deere tractor. And if I would have known how hard, how difficult this was going to be to work, I would have never chose it. It's not necessary for this application. Um, I'm going to use this maybe, you know, one, one time in its life or maybe two times. I'm just kind of doing it for a lark. But, uh, I have some large carbide facing mills that I squared this up with. Uh, the most difficult part was when I cut this slot, this 3 16 by 3 16 slot that's going to hold my threading insert. Uh, I literally wore out uh, my only 3 16 carbide end mill. High speed steel wouldn't even touch this. So um, I've worked with a lot harder materials than this. but. Like I say, it's totally unnecessary for this project. So what I'm going to do is, because I've got a pretty good taper on the sidewall on this slot, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the surface grinder and I'll square that right up and I'll handle that no problem. So um, I've got the tapped holes in there and they were a little dicey to tap in there, but you can generally get by with a little bit more uh, when you're tapping and drilling than, than when you're milling uh, small areas. So. Anyway, this is my threading insert holder that goes into my uh, my uh, yeah that goes into my holder for my lathe, and uh, so this is the way it's shaping up. So I'll grind the the thread tip, thread cutting tip on this tool bit right here. So that's where we're at right now. We're going to go over to the grinder and I'll uh, I'll set up to. Uh, straighten that slot up. And now we're at the surface grinder and uh, on a previous video I had my index head up here and I ground the teeth in on a, on a gear and uh, I have this shape dressed in this wheel. We're going to use this wheel to straighten that slot out on my uh, insert holder and uh, in a perfect world what you'd have is multiple heads and I could save this shape and I could just uh, store it somewhere and put another wheel on with another hub, but I don't, so 
I only have one hub. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sacrifice this wheel. I'm going to dress the bottom off of them and I'll make it uh, square so that I can uh, get into that slot. And that slot needs to be about 3 16 wide, so um, that's what I'll dress it down to. But I have to get this shape off of here. And uh, I could just put my diamond on here, and I've done that before, um, just for expediency. But um, just to uh, make it a little bit easier on my diamond and to go a little faster, I'll, I'll take this uh, dressing stone and I'll rough it down first, and then I'll put the diamond up there and finish the dress job. So, okay, here we go. Okay, now we're ready to grind our tool bit, and we're going to grind the, uh, the 60 degree point on our tool bit for our threads. And I've got my tool bit clamped on my cube with two clamps here, and uh, I've got pennies for risers. And I didn't have any socket head cap screws, so I just used regular screws. I've got the cube clamped in my grinding vise on a 5 degree angle and that will give us our, our back taper and so now we can set the whole works on the surface grinder and we will have a 60 degree actually a 30 degree angle ground on the edge of our uh, grinding wheel so that will be our next step so this is my radius and angle dresser and uh, this is fairly new I've dressed um, some radiuses with it and that works fairly well um, but I haven't done an angle yet and so I'm getting ready to do that so you unlock the front end and you just basically take your fingers and and push the diamond back and forth on the slide like so and um, it's not of course it's not locked down on the chuck right now but so maybe it'll be better but I don't know how how smooth we can do it with we're going to try it. We're going to see how it works. I just can't see why that slide wouldn't get gummed up with grit like, you know, the first thing. But, okay, we'll give her a try. So now we're ready to dress that angle on the front of our wheel. And I've locked the table down. And so I'll start the spindle up. And we'll see how this goes. I, I guess, I think I can do this fairly smoothly. Okay, here we go. I may have said this before, but this is where a little manual grinder really shines with this kind of work. Lots of angles and radiuses and contours and slots and things like that that you can really control with a manual handle. Um, and not to say that wet grinders don't have their place, automatic wet grinders. I mean, if you do a lot of squaring up of blocks and um, large expanses of flat surfaces boy I'll tell you you can't beat a, a wet grinder but um, for this kind of stuff uh, that's why I chose uh, a, a manual grinder for my shop because this is most of what the type of thing that I do so okay so now let's uh, start grinding the contour into this tool bit
right, so now I've got the uh, tool bit ground uh, with a 60 degree threading edge. So what I'll do now is take a stone and put about a 5 thousandths uh, flat on the top uh, of the point here. And I stayed a little bit shy with a grinder, so there's already a couple thousands flat, but I'll just put a little bit more on there, and uh, then we'll be just about ready on this. Okay, stand by. So you might be able to see this. I've got about a five thousandths flat on that tip now. And so we're just about ready to give this baby a try. So this is how this is going to work. This is the broken part, but my workpiece will be in here like this, and we'll start up against a hard stop, and then we'll thread out. I hope I haven't got this backwards. Bear with me. We'll see how we do here. Look at this, guys. October 18th, and it's snowing in Iowa. <laughs> yeah. Okay guys, we're close to cutting threads. One thing I want to mention is we will be running this lathe in reverse and if you have a spin-off chuck, this is where you want to really proceed cautiously because uh, you, you could spin your chuck off if you um, put too much load on it. So uh, basically I'd advise against it. If you've got a uh, you know a D series pin on chuck or a cam lock chuck, yeah, but not a spin up chuck. Don't don't attempt it with a spin off chuck. Okay, now before we start, I just want to ask if you please join me to offer prayers for Anthony Brown. Anthony has a, a channel called uh, Ragsdale Creek Workshop, and uh, he's a YouTube friend. Anthony recently kicked COVID and has a real slow recovery and uh, you know if you just pray for Anthony to uh, proceed to a, have a full recovery and can get back active in his shop real soon I'd appreciate it. So now with the setup here I've, I've uh, squared my little homemade tool bed up to the spindle and uh, I'm running the spindle in reverse. We're going up against a hard stop back here. We only have about a quarter of an inch of uh, length of threads that we're, we're making here. This is an 18 pitch thread. 
and I've tested the feed direction we are feeding out and I have practiced a couple times on my dial um, it, because we're feeding back here in a confined space it's real important that you get your dial fully activated when you pull the, the uh, lever um, because uh, you can you know get it partially engaged and uh, you're going to booger your threads up if you do so uh, we don't want to ruin our workpiece and also we sure don't want to ruin our tool bit because uh, it's not like a uh, commercially available um, insert that you can just change the insert and, and uh, you know keep on threading um, this is a special one and it probably set us back an hour and a half to have to remake this thing so uh, those are the, the highlights and uh, like I say just slow down make every move count and, and we're not going to we're not going to run a real fast spindle speed we want plenty of reaction time here I tend to thread a little bit slower than a lot of guys do um, you know this isn't a uh, speed contest here so uh, okay with that said I think we're gonna we're just just about ready to to start here so Okay guys, that should just about do it. I apologize, the battery died on the camera, so we didn't get it all recorded, but uh, it's pretty pretty standard threading stuff, so here's, here's the body of my grinder. It's in there pretty good. Yeah, good. give you a little bit closer look at the threads. There we go. Yeah, now you can kind of see what we have there. Okay, now we'll work on the other end of this little end cap. And now I turned a little bit of a radius on here. Actually, I just faked it. I put a 45 and then I filed it. And I think we're ready to cut this off. Um, I've got so much labor in this, I'm not going to risk cutting it off with a cutoff tool. I think I'll put it on the bandsaw, saw it off, hold it on this side, and then face the front and uh, finish the radius and polishing on it. So we're just about done.
So here we have the finished piece and I think it looks pretty good. You know my neurals aren't the best. I've never been too concerned with perfect neurals because well I mean all they are is there to provide a grip and if they do that they do the job. So um, yeah we have our internal threads. We made our uh, homemade tool bit to do this with uh, so that we didn't have to buy a $60 commercially made one and um, this is made out of cold old steel and yeah it came out pretty good so we've gone from this little plastic piece to this which is much more durable and kind of unique I bet I'm probably one of the few in in the United States to have a, a steel end cap for my die grinder. So here's the final assembly. Ah, there we go. So yeah, so that's going to be a lot more durable and put this baby back in service now. There you have it. Don't forget to remember Anthony Brown in your prayers. And that'll do it for this one. And this is Mike signing out.